Hi, Planet Under Pressure 2012 conference is on this week. Uh, yesterday, uh, Alan Robock, the geoengineer, gave a speech, a talk, if you like, on geoengineering. And today, also, there's various geoengineering um, projects being discussed, proposed methods. At half past seven this morning, I looked over to the east and there was massive streaks of chemtrail in the sky. So, one piece of science is missing from this whole conference on sustainability, etc. Um, they've actually been geoengineering in the skies around the world for at least 15 years non-stop. Uh, yesterday was clear skies. But the whole weekend before, from March 24th, Saturday, March 24th, and the Friday before, for about three days, was one of the biggest attacks of chemtrail. And they are attacks because the public's health is being destroyed and the environment is being destroyed. So you can't get more hypocritical than this conference. It's a bunch of criminals getting together to decide the fate of you and how you should be treated and population control measures, etc., uh, sustainability. It's all a massive, huge scam to warrant uh, population control in the name of saving the planet. For years I studied the flora of the Himalayas. I love every aspect of nature, its beauty, its, its ugliness, it, it's majesty. So, if anyone wants to criticise me, then I'm irresponsible for not wanting to care about the planet and support these kind of conferences. I would say to them, do your own research and you'll come to the same conclusions that global warming, stroke, climate change is a massive con, a massive carbon credit con. This Planet Under Pressure conference by the way, these are chemtrails. This is a picture of London. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. They fan out and form banks of cloud because they're full of heavy metals. Heavy metals, um, barium salts, uh, radioactive strontium, uh, bacteria has been found red blood cells have been found and for independent research and analysis uh, for someone who isn't funded by the UN go to carnacominstitute.org so <clears throat> yesterday Alan Robock was speaking let's have a look here yeah Tuesday the 27th of March in room 6 geoengineering Engineering Constraints, chaired by Tim Kruger. Uh, the, conveners were, um, the conveners were Richard Darton, University of Oxford, Alan Robock of Rutgers University, uh, Matt Watson, University of Bristol, Alex Lubansky, uh, University of Oxford, Tim Kruger, University of Oxford. There is a wide range of proposed geoengineering techniques to counteract the climate change. This session will examine what the engineering constraints are on the proposed techniques. The proposed techniques. I've got an accompanying video that I filmed this morning about seven o'clock. It's Wednesday now. They're sitting around discussing geoengineering today and <laughs> if they go for their lunch and look out to the east they'll see masses of chemtrails. The link is in the description below of the video that I've filmed. So, um, yeah, terrestrial carbon dioxide removal, ecological limits is actually a, a natural gas. We need more of it. That's, that proposes using huge machines to remove and um, suck out the carbon dioxide. Uh, another Topic for discussion is geoengineering potential 
of enhanced dissolution of olivine on land and in the open ocean. Um, Dr. P. Kohler, Professor J. Hartman, Mr. J. F. Abrams, Dr. C. Volker, and Professor D. A. Wolf Gladrow, Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research, Bremerhaven, Germany, Institute for Biogeochemistry and Marine Chemistry, Klima Campus, Universität Hamburg, Deutschland. The climatic implications of potential engineering parameters for solar geoengineering particles, Dr. B. Kravitz and Dr. J. J. Blackstock. Carnegie Institute for Science, Department of Global Ecology, USA, Center for International Governance Innovation, Canada International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, Austria. Uh, the First Lady of Austria is attending the conference. Ban Kai Moon gave a, a video open, open day presentation. And it, the whole conference actually ends with uh, Wendy Watson Wright, Assistant Director and Gen um, Assistant Director General and Executive Secretary of the Intergovernmental Oceanic uh, Commission of UNESCO on behalf of the UNESCO Director General. So, Wendy Watson Wright on behalf of the UNESCO Director General. Now, who was the first director of UNESCO? Julian Huxley, Eugenics Society, brother of Aldo Huxley who penned, apparently penned, Brave New World, who later admitted that that was the template, that was the blueprint. Brave New World Revisited was actually a manual, he admitted, in so many words, as a speech. So UNESCO is the standardised education for, for the world. They've got to keep you dumbed down, they've got to keep you stupid, To, for this new world order coming in. Uh, well, we're already in it, actually. So, um, going back to the geoengineering, uh, Wednesday, challenges to progress. This is going on today in London at the Excel Centre. Yep at the New London International Convention Centre, the ICC at Excel, within one of the world's largest regeneration projects in London's east side. It's not far from the Olympic Stadium actually, it's pretty much on the Thames. So that's going on today and I was all ready to go, I had my voice recorder, ready to speak to some of these people as they were perhaps wandering around. There's no way uh, I would get anywhere near um, getting in there to hear what they have to say. I would like to uh, have sat in front of the sessions and heard what these chaps were spouting and asked them a few choice questions. But um, the press and the registration is just too tight. So. These people will be wandering around having lunch maybe, taking a tour of the Thames or something. So um, if anyone's down there in London, just go up peacefully and respectfully ask them a few questions like Why are you talking about proposed methods when it's already going on? Well, we know why. Hand them a few leaflets like this, for example. Chemtrails. We are being poisoned by military jets spraying heavy metals. Government media won't tell you, so we have to. There are thousands of hours of amateur footage of the UK being sprayed by unmarked tankers, etc. There's some, some more examples there. It's a nice asterisk. Stop chemtrails. 
and up there too. And even on the website itself, actually, there's a picture of Buckingham Palace completely covered in chemtrail. So perhaps the geoengineers see that picture and say, Yeah, I think that's one of mine, actually. Yeah. So, it's completely insane. These people are psychopaths, really. But remember, they're all just front people. They have no real power themselves. They're the people that are supposed to take the flak and engage with the public in endless debate and run them around in circles while the real geoengineering is going on and our health is being destroyed for real. So bear that in mind. But still, they need to be confronted, they need to be exposed as the front men and women they are. When you look at when you look at their program for today, uh, chaired by Tim Kruger, the, this ses this session will consider the governance issues associated with geoengineering and report on the progress on on the Solar Radiation Management (SRM) governance initiative. Solar radiation management governance emission, uh, initiative. So global governance. The Oxford Principles for Geoengineering Governance. Professor Rayner, Professor R Regwell, Professor Savalescu, Professor Nick Pigeon, Mr T Kruger. So Oxford University College London, Cardiff University, Marine Engineering, Marine Geoengineering, the development of international governance arrangement under the London Convention and Protocol. Dr. Vivian, CFAS, UK. Governing solar geoengineering from lab research to the real geopolitical world. That's interesting, isn't it? Wouldn't you love to be a fly on the wall there? There is live streaming, but I bet you they're not streaming the geoengineering. Uh, governing solar and uh, geoengineering from lab research, from lab research to the real geopolitical world. So from the lab to applying it to the real world. It's being applied for the last 15 years at least. Dr. Blackstock, Centre for International Governance Innovation. Ah, appraising geoengineering is another topic. Uh, Bellamy, Chilvers, Lenton, Vaughan, University of East Anglia, where all the climate gate scam was exposed and all the emails where they were fixing the figures and uh, I quote, hide the decline. Actually, as I'm looking out the sky now, it's uh, nine o'clock on the dot in the morning, Wednesday. As I'm looking out the sky now, I can see a contrail. It's disappearing straight away. That's water vapour, folks. That's normal. And yes, I've seen contrails since I was a kid. And yes, I remember. And no, it's not part of the fraud. The hoax. This isn't a hoax. We're being battered every day with chem trails, chemical trails, aerosol, aerosols, uh, death dumps, call it whatever you like, it's still poison from the skies, right? I will keep saying that too. Geoengineering is another one. This is their cutesy name for it. And so, solar... Thank you. Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative Report on progress to date from Mr. A. Parker from the Royal Society UK. Intrinsically linked to geoengineering the Royal Society. Very old, very establishment, if you like. Mr. A. Parker. Mr. A. Parker. So he finishes up today's 
conferences and meetings and discussions and open panel discussions on geoengineering, which are, chemtrails are a massive part of. That's the session information. The geoengineering governance chaired by Tim Kruger uh, Britain's Royal Society concluded that the acceptability of geoengineering will be determined as much by social, legal and political issues as by scientific and technical factors. There are serious and complex governance issues which need to be resolved. Geoengineering represents the stabilisation of a highly heterogeneous set of technological practices. As yet, there are no functional technologies and the various proposals are imagined technologies that might turn out to be very different from the current conceptions. I'll read that again. As yet, there are no, this is from the site. This is what they're talking about today. This is their little link on the website, Planet Under Pressure 2012, for Wednesday. The Oxford Principles for Geoengineering Governance. As yet, there are no, there are no functional technologies, this is from 2007, and they were spraying then too, from aircraft. As yet, there are no functional technologies, and the various proposals are imagined technologies that might turn out to be very different from current conceptions, if they are ever brought to maturity. Hence, it is appropriate to think about geoengineering in terms of David Collingridge's 1980 Technology Control Dilemma, which identifies the challenges of designing appropriate governance arrangements for a technology in the early stages of its development, versus the difficulties in reconfiguring a technology once it is established. One approach to these challenges was the pro proposal of the Oxford Principles for Geoengineering Governance, Rainer et al. 210, which sought to embody significant public concerns about the research, development and possible deployment of geoengineering technologies. The presentation will describe these principles and proposals for their implementation in practice through uh, technology specific protocols to be established at clear stage gates in the research and development process for any geoengineering technology. Uh, so each, each geoengineering topic has um, a couple of paragraphs explaining the proposed methods, etc., and governance of proposed technologies, etc. Governing solo geoengineering from lab research to the real political world. And I want to finish drawing your attention to this. I have laboured it a lot. I just want you to take a look at this yourselves. Or go down there and hand out a few chemtrail leaflets or stick a few banners up. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make it today due to various circumstances. Unfortunately, but these kind of meetings are going on all over the world virtually every day. So find out where they are and find out who's attending. And if you can get there, um, stick a camera in their face peacefully and respectfully stick a camera in their face and ask them, ask them why they're talking about proposed methods when they're actually spraying the skies right above their heads. Ask them how they stay healthy. Ask them if they have access to advanced military medicine. How do they propose to stay healthy while the sky is being sprayed and we're, we're all being sprayed like bugs? If you think I'm insane, have a look at the sky.
most days and you'll see this. I can't stress enough just how bad these health effects are. People are suffering, people are dying from the chemtrail fallout. And we have nothing to lose by exposing this because if it carries on and it does not stop the spraying of the public and the environment, trashing everything, then it's, it's the end of humanity anyway. It's the end of this generation and the next that damaged DNA that will carry on through generations. Now remember, these characters and the people behind them, the international bankers, they want the world for themselves, for their future boys. That's why it's happening. They don't need us useless eaters anymore, you see. Thanks very much for the Industrial Revolution, etc. And all the wars and everything that kept the population down, <clears throat> which we funded both sides of. Thanks for all that. But we're going to be kind of half Borg uh, slaves now. Um, we're just going to produce half Borg slaves and um, go off into space. Only the worthy, etc. Only the worthy. So that's the reality of it. And uh, if you're asking why this subject of chemtrails and spraying the skies with toxic metals, uh, bacteria, uh, if you're asking yourself why this isn't on the news, then you really haven't been paying attention. Find out who owns Reuters, for example, which, which dishes out all the the news to people around the world. There is a live stream, a live video stream of this conference, but I don't think the geoengineers will be streamed live. So um, check out what they do have to say. And everybody's there. And I just wanted to draw attention to that, really. Uh, the UK Chief Scientific Advisor is, has been there. Uh, Richard Black from the BBC. Shill. UNESCO France. Uh, it's all over. It's all over. The whole conference. Oliver Morton, The Economist. Um, virtually everyone from virtually every university on the planet is there. And uh, various other politicians, the First Lady of Austria, etc. Ah, well, have a look yourself, and um, that's all I've got to say. Uh, expose these people now for um, their crimes against humanity. It's genocide. It's worse than genocide, it's humanicide. Thanks for watching. That's it. Thank you.